Welcome to the first module in our online BMAT physics course. Physics is probably the most feared part of the BMAT exam. Most students will be studying chemistry, biology and often maths to a higher level, but for many physics is a distant memory, and usually not a pleasant one. But the physics syllabus is actually quite restricted, with six key areas to understand – electricity, motion and energy, thermal physics, waves, the electromagnetic spectrum, and radioactivity. In the last few years, radioactivity questions have been very common, often appearing up to twice per paper. The one area that may surprise you is thermal physics, but fear not, many of the concepts will be familiar to you from your chemistry classes. In this module, we'll start by looking over some basics of electricity in particular, electrical circuits. Let's start by looking at a question. Here is a diagram of an electric circuit. Assuming that all resistors have a resistance of 2 ohms, and that the wires have negligible resistance, which of the following statements is true? You have 60 seconds. This question may have come as a shock, making all of your past physics memories come flooding back. But if you understand the basic principles, then you'll be able to answer the question easily. The correct statement is D. The ammeter will read 15 amps when the switch is closed. But, in order to look at why this is right, we need to go over the basic theory of electrical circuits. Let's start by looking at statement C. When the switch is closed, the voltage reading across R3 will drop by 5 volts. So, what is voltage, and how does voltage relate to electrical circuits? Voltage can be defined as the potential difference in charge between two points in an electrical field. Basically, it is the potential difference in energy which moves a charge between two points within a circuit. So the greater this potential difference, or voltage, the greater the flow of charge or current will be. In order to measure the voltage across a component in a circuit, we use a voltmeter. Now voltmeters must always be placed in parallel to the component, not in series, and they're denoted by a circle containing the letter V. So a volt is equal to a joule per coulomb, and we can relate this in the formula that voltage equals the work done divided by the charge. Work done is a measure of energy, and so we measure it in joules. We'll explore this concept in more detail later on, but this equation is on the BMAT syllabus to learn. So how do we measure the voltage in a series circuit? Firstly, it's important to remember that in a series circuit, all components are placed on the same branch. Here, we have a simple series circuit. It contains two resistors, R1 and R2. Remember that when using a voltmeter, it must always be placed in parallel to the components being measured, as you can see in the diagram here. In a series circuit, the voltage of the cell, or the battery, is equal to the sum of the voltages across all components. In other words, Vt is equal to V1 plus V2 in this diagram. For parallel circuits, it's a little different. In this case, 
the sum of the voltages of components on the same branch will equal the voltage of the cell. In other words, each branch gets the same voltage as that of the cell. So in this diagram, the total voltage, or Vt, is equal to V1 plus V2, which is the same as V3. We can now go back and look at statement C, and see why it must be incorrect. When the switch is open, the circuit is a simple series circuit. You know the voltage across the cell is 10 volts, so the voltage across R3 will also be 10 volts. When you close the switch, you turn the circuit from a series into a parallel circuit. But remember, the voltage across each branch will be the same as the voltage of the cell. So as such, there will be no change in the voltage across R3. It will remain at 10 volts with the switch closed. Let's now look at statement A. The voltage readings across R1 and R2 will both be 5 volts when the switch is closed. This question once again relies on the same theory we just looked at. In parallel circuits, the voltage across each branch is equal to that of the power source. So, the voltage across R1 and R2 will be 10 volts. It will not be split into 5 volts per branch, which makes this option incorrect. Another part of the BMAT syllabus states you should be aware of the voltage current graphs for fixed resistors and for filament lamps. We can express this relationship graphically, with current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis. In a fixed resistor, the resistance will always remain the same. As such, if you increase the current, you increase the voltage. The current is directly proportional to the voltage. It is shown here in this graph as a straight diagonal line. In a filament lamp, however, the resistance is not fixed. As the filament gets hotter, the resistance increases, and as such, you get a sigmoidal shaped graph instead. Note that for the BMAT exam, these are the only two graphs you need to know relating current and voltage. We can now move on and look at statement B. Closing the switch will increase the total resistance in the circuit. So before we answer, we need to look at how you would define what resistance is, and how you calculate the resistance in circuits. Resistance can be defined as the opposition of flow of electrical charge, or current, through a conductor. We measure resistance in ohms, and for the purposes of BMAT, you can consider that the resistance in the electrical wires themselves of the circuit will always be negligible. There are two laws of resistance you need to be aware of. Firstly, the resistance is directly proportional to the length of a wire. And secondly, the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area of the wire. So, a short, fat wire would have less resistance than a long, thin wire. This principle doesn't only just apply to electricity, but would also apply to fluids. Calculating the resistance of a series circuit is very straightforward. The total resistance is equal to the sum of the resistances of all the components. So looking at this simple diagram, the total resistance would be R1 plus R2. Students often make mistakes when calculating the resistance in parallel circuits. Here, you need to follow the reciprocal law, which states that 1 over the total resistance is equal to 1 over resistor 1, plus 1 over resistor 2, plus 1 over resistor 3, etc. But many people make the mistake and forget that it's 1 over the total not just the total equals. So therefore, make sure you always remember 1 over the total equals 1 over each individual resistor combined. But of course, in the BMAT, you're unlikely to get a nice and simple series or parallel circuit. And instead, 
you may face more complicated circuits, which have elements of both, such as this one. So what do you do if you have both series and parallel components within a circuit? The key is to simplify. Try to solve some of the branches in order to make it easier to calculate. So in this case, you have two branches, one containing R1 and R2, and the other containing R3. R1 and R2 are in series with each other, so you can calculate the total resistance of these two first, giving you the value for that branch. You now have a much neater parallel circuit with one component per branch, making it easy to solve. So, if we now go back and look at statement B again, we see it's incorrect, as closing the switch will decrease, not increase, the overall resistance. When the switch is open, you have a simple series circuit. And, as the question told you, you know the resistance across each component is 2 ohms. So the total resistance will simply be 2 ohms. But, if you apply the reciprocal rule to the new parallel circuit which is formed by closing the switch, then the total resistance now becomes 2 thirds ohm instead of 2 ohms, which is less. So what about statement E? Current flowing through R3 is equal to 10 amps. So before we answer, let's talk about current and the laws which apply to current in circuits. Current can be defined as the flow of electric charge through an electrical conductor. Usually, this would be electrons in a circuit, but if you had a solution, it could be ions instead. We measure current in amperes using an ammeter, which contrary to voltmeters, must always be placed in series. You need to be familiar with the formula which defines current. So current is the charge divided by the time. One of the laws of electrical circuits is that in a series circuit, the current will be the same wherever it is recorded in the circuit. So, if we look at this circuit here, the current recorded at I1 is the same as that at I2, which is the same as that at I3. In parallel circuits, however, it gets a little more complicated. The current which enters and leaves at any branching point is equal. So the current after a branch point must equal the sum of the currents before the branching point. So if we look at this diagram of a circuit, we see that I1 would equal I2 plus I4, which would be the same as I5. But remember, the current on any single branch will always be the same. So in this case, I2 and I3 would both have the same reading. But just because the current is the same on any given branch, it doesn't mean that two different branches would have the same current. So if we look at our diagram, the reading of I2 and I4 might not be the same, although I2 and I3 would always be the same. So now that we've looked at the definitions for voltage, current and resistance, we can put it all together into an equation which I'm sure you're going to remember from GCSE. Voltage equals current times resistance, or V equals IR. You're unlikely to get through a BMAT exam without having to use this equation at least once. We can now go back to statement E and apply this equation to see why it's incorrect. We know from earlier that a voltage across R3 must be 10 volts, and the resistance across all components is 2 ohms. Rearranging V equals IR, we get I equals V over R. We can then plug in our numbers 10 and 2 to show that the current equals 10 divided by 2, which is 5 amperes, not 10 as quoted in the statement. Having looked at the theory, we can now answer the final statement. 
the ammeter will read 15 amps when the switch is closed. We saw earlier when we analysed statement B that when the switch is closed, the total resistance of the circuit changes, as it now becomes a parallel circuit and not a series circuit, which it was when the switch was open. We calculated that the resistance of the circuit will therefore become two-thirds of an ohm. Rearranging V equals IR to I equals V over R, we know we have the voltage, which is 10, and we've calculated the new resistance of the circuit when the switch is closed, which is two-thirds of an ohm. So, 10 divided by two-thirds equals 15. The ammeter will therefore read 15 amps when the switch is closed. Although there are many different symbols used in circuits, you only need to be familiar with the basic ones. Here, we have a summary of the symbols used for cells, resistors, variable resistors, lamps, voltmeters, ammeters, ohmmeters, and switches. Electrical circuits are a common but complicated topic, and usually one that most students don't enjoy. But, if you learn the fundamental rules of how to calculate the voltage, current and resistance in series and parallel circuits, you'll be in a strong position to tackle any electrical circuit-based question. And remember that when measuring voltage, you have to place the voltmeter in parallel with the component. But when measuring the current, the ammeter must be in series. So far, in this module, we've explored three of the formula you need to know for the exam. Voltage equals current times resistance, or V equals IR. Current equals charge over time. And voltage equals work done over charge. We've created an associated handout you can download and print off, which has a summary of all of these must-know formula for the BMAT exam. In the next module, we'll continue on the topic of electricity and power, building upon this first module.